My name's David Dixon. I'm a photographer who's used photography to recover and maintain my mental health. When I told my story, others started to tell me theirs and I went out to meet them. I set out with two aims for this project. The first is to work towards making it more commonplace to talk about our problems and the second to encourage everyone to take positive steps towards helping themselves and maintaining their mental well-being. It's been an incredible journey and I've met some truly inspiring people and now I'm sharing their stories with you. Hello, I'm Simon. Um, I'm um, father of two little tinkers, husband, um, have a full-time job in London. It was a time when we had a six-month-year-old boy, Evan, and a two-and-a-half-year-old. And Emily found a lump, and we had it tested, and it was, you know, it, it was cancer. Um, and that was, that was the shock, right? World ends, and you suddenly into that whole process of dealing with a life event that you never thought would happen to you. And then the job, a very demanding job to, to deal with, running the house and, and dealing with all, all those sort of normal life events, but with, with the sickness on top of it. And for me, it was just, just completely bury it. And, and that was how I coped. And if, and if anyone asked me how I was doing, it was always the same, I'm fine, you know, I'm okay. I was worried that if I started to admit how I, or how I was possibly feeling or how it was affecting me personally, I would have felt, first of all, selfish because Emily was the one that was going through absolute hell. I think in hindsight, for me, you know, it, it was a way of coping, but it just, all the, the sort of the problems were pushed to later and I wasn't dealing with with anything any of the you know the, the emotions on my side I was just completely shut down to that so what happened was that we, we got the great news that Emily was all clear and could now start just getting back to normal and enjoying our lives again and then it was probably a year or so later six months a year that just struggled with you know little things would make me really cross or I'd feel you know, overly emotional about stuff and just didn't know what was happening because life was you know, back to how it should have been. I think, it was, I think there was a moment at home where I just snapped over nothing. I can't even remember what it was, like not being able to find my keys or something really trivial. You know, and it sort of affected me for you know, half the day of this feeling of sort of being just angry about things. And then when I looked back for the previous weeks, could see that actually that had been happening quite a lot um, and needed to work out why that was happening because that's not who I am and who I wanted to be. So that's why I went to, you know, to, to speak to someone and help put things, you know, just sort things out in my head. Spoke to a counsellor and, and, you know, the analogy he gave me was that, you know, the emotional well was full um, from everything that had happened and so little things were just tipping it over the edge. The chap I saw definitely was, you know, he, he saw anything, whether it be photography or going out for a run or biking, but he saw, you know, that kind of mindfulness of just having a bit of, of time. I mean, it's, it's sort of like meditation, you know, sort of having something where you're at peace with yourself and able to just not not think about things, you know, let the thoughts just sort of drift through in a way and and that has a value to it. And you know, he the advice was definitely on, on those lines, just to have those kind of peace and quiet times. It was photography really where you know, I just sort of discovered that you could be so much more creative. You yeah. know, I could go out and take shots that I liked and you know, edit them and show them and and um, give, you know, give yourself something really to think about. I think it was definitely a way to, to sort of just get that kind of mindfulness. You know, you just switch off a little bit and, and you know, it, 
you know, having sort of only thinking about the camera and the settings and the composition, you not you don't really you can't really think about anything else, and so it just helps you to to sort of yeah just switch off and and have a nice creative place in your head that you go to 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 sort of um, you know just to be to be yourself for a bit. So I think being out in places like this, you sort of you see the details around you, um, you know, light catching, you know, the colour on the trees or the bark or, or whatever it was. But even even without the camera, it was nice because you see, like so we have today, you see the the deer and the and the, and the wildlife, and and so it's just sort of good for the heart really to see nature and in all its glory. But you know, the, by having the camera, I think you just notice the details so much better you know you're sort of thinking about composition and light and because you're thinking about those things you for me you know I felt that I was just sort of seeing in a more sort of you know uh, creative way but being feel, feeling quite grateful for what was around me um, you know it's hard not to be places like this and and to really enjoy it but I think the camera just allows you to do that um, much more when things are a bit stressful and tough, whether it's, you know, for my home life, my job, um, and it's easy to, to dwell on those things, it's natural to, to do that. Whereas being out here with a camera, it's just a completely sort of uh, an easy way of sort of forgetting about them for a, for a little while and, and thinking about other things around you. And I found that you know, by being out, everything just wouldn't seem to feel quite so bad. You know, it's no wonder that I felt overwhelmed by everything because it's an overwhelming experience. And then to sort of deal with it, um, to talk it through and to, to, to sort of give yourself a bit of a break, I think was, you know, was what I needed. And I think the advice would be to have that as early on as possible. Having that outlet is, is, um, you know, is a really important thing. I mean, obviously, I had the big, you know, the big shock thing, but you know, it doesn't have to be that. You know, some, you know, it's a demanding job or anything. It's, it's, you know, if you're feeling overwhelmed by, 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 you know, the sort of the pressures of life, I think it's, it's just really helpful to get the help. And I think the more people talk about it. You know, the more people realise that it is okay, because then you can you can get the help you need, and then get back onto an even keel, and you know, and feel feel enjoy life as it you know as it should be enjoyed again. Life's really really good, and it's a great great sort of time of our of my life at the moment. You know, the kids are young, and you know they're wonderful, and you know, my wife Emily, she's fit and healthy again, and. And but in a nice sort of headspace where just you know just enjoying the world around me, I think. Fa famous sort of deer in these parts, which um, there's an albino deer, so completely white. And um, yeah, and I saw it first for the first time actually when you know after Emily had been diagnosed and. When I went out, out for a walk to get, you know, a bit of work out what on earth I was going to do with the whole situation, and um, and saw the saw the deer. And it sounds a bit sounds a bit trite, but it was a sort of just a really nice moment of of you know you think oh it's somehow it's been sent to kind of you know show itself to you and maybe think things will be okay and feel like maybe you know things weren't quite so bad and that you could get through it and obviously i was reading a lot into seeing a deer but at the time it was uh it's definitely a sort of poignant moment and things are okay and things are okay so and i saw it recently again you know maybe it was just sort of there just to remind me of that it was a pleasure to spend time with simon He's a friendly, laid-back and very thoughtful individual who had something happen in his life that shook the earth beneath his feet. 
And Simon's story isn't unusual. A demanding job, a young family, and all the commitments and responsibilities that come packaged with them. It just goes to show that when unexpected events or stress hits any one of these things, it can throw everything else out of line. It can change how we respond to otherwise insignificant things. The emotional well was full. We can all understand this, and just hearing this simple metaphor might just make it easier to identify when it happens to you. The important thing in all of this is that when Simon recognised and acknowledged that something had changed, that something wasn't right, he decided to seek help and spend time doing things that helped him. Photography for Simon, like myself, provides that respite from the pressures we all deal with. He uses it to relax, to be more mindful, and his photographs focus on the details, the small things and the beauty that surround him, which, if you ask me, is the perfect philosophy for life. The more you share this video, the more people will see it and hear the messages that are contained within. And if you think that's important, then please share it in every way that you can. If you feel like anything in this video has affected you in any way, there's a list of resources in the description below. And remember to look after yourself, talk about your problems and do the things that you know make you feel good. Thanks for watching.